My name is Jim Minty. I'm the director for, for Seattle's Easter Swing. So uh, pretty well oversee the whole event. Uh, West Coast Swing, probably 20 years. I, mean, I started off with ballroom and country and then got into swing dancing about five years after that. And I've been doing it ever since, so about 20. I've been dancing about just under 30 years. Uh, the social nature of it and the different, different, uh, the grow, social and growing nature of it. A lot of the dances, whether they be ballroom, they're very prescribed. They've been around like ballroom dances. The, the, the curriculum is very described, pr prescribed, I should say. Um, West Coast Swing is growing and changing based a lot of the music because it's not a, it's not a formula that patterns written down on paper. A lot of it, it, it it's it grown and changes. Music has changed, so the the, the look and feel of the dance changed. Uh, it's also the, one of the most versatile to the types of music, blues, pop, funk, rock, country. Um, a lot of the other dances fit into specific genres better, mm -hmm. but West Coast Swing crosses a lot of boundaries. Seeing people get into it for a variety of reasons. There's a lot of people get into it like for the social niche, like dance just as a social mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. One, I think probably one of the interesting things that got me started that I saw progress through people. Um, I was part of the ballroom dance club up in Edmonton for many years, and the dancers. <laughs> it was kind of interesting. The, the teaching assistants, people would come in to take a semester of ballroom dancing and the better ones or the ones who were more interested or more involved or whatever would become teaching assistants. You didn't have to have a particular aptitude but you had to be willing to learn. Those who had an aptitude for it picked things up really fast. It was interesting that the technical people, the out of I think 34 teaching assistants, they most of them were either in IT or, uh, or technical courses which was very much introvert or quiet, reserved people, and yeah. the dancing really brought them out. It got them out into a social, because it put them into the social mode of actually interacting with people and touching people and dancing with people. Um, when I see people doing West Coast Swing, because it's more tied to the music that they enjoy, mm -hmm. uh, listen to them on a social basis, it, it, you see people relax more because it's a piece of familiarity. Yeah. So they, it, it tends to bring them out sooner, faster, and, uh, and people take different paths. So there's some who, those who come up for it for just the social nature, and then um, every now and then they get the little bug, like they challenge themselves with a the competition. A lot of people don't like to get out in front of people, but when they do, they get out and they get that little bug of, this is, the energy is kind of fun. Yeah. And so then they start to challenge themselves by taking more classes, or they go, oh, I want to do a routine or something, and then, the, the pieces start to click together because in challenging themselves to do routines or to put a little, to kind of have that official or unofficial goal, mm -hmm. um, they, their, their abilities kind of go in little leaps and bounds. They stagnate for a while and they just rock it up and they do really good and then they hit that plateau and they coast for a while and then something kicks them up. It's like most sports. You, yeah. you got to have some kind of goal or piece to make you get past those little those little humps. It inspires people. Oh, a couple things. Um, a, you get to see. You know, what you get to see, touch and feel, mm -hmm. tends to get into people better than just watching something on TV or taking the Thursday afternoon class. But you come in here on a Thursday or a Thursday night at seven o'clock, and you stick it around till seven o'clock Monday morning, and. You learn by you pick it up by osmosis. You just around it. It's it, it gets into your body and soul. Getting out there, whether it's workshops or dancing all night, where you're so tired that you just pick it up. Okay, going back to what I said earlier about uh, prescribed patterns, or yeah. like if you if, if you go through the ballroom stream, there's uh, whether you're American social or, or, or international. There's the bronze, the gold, and the silver syllabuses that you learn, and you can pretty well go anywhere in the world, and they're going to teach you the same stuff. Yeah. Okay. Now, every dance, if as long as it's a partner-style dance, at some point you have to learn to partner with somebody. 
and ha having them ballroom for several years initially, I didn't never really learn the connection piece until I got further along with it. They go, okay, you've done this, you've done this, thing, but now you need to be able to do this. And the way, when I got into West Coast, we didn't initially talk about it, but as I got into teaching it and learning it in a lot more detail, um, because it's not, it's more of a fluid dance, like every, every dance becomes a conversation, as opposed to, I, like, I'm, I'm gonna lead, you're gonna follow. Yeah. And we're doing these set figures kind of thing. Uh, the conversation can change in a second. I could lead 15 left side passes, and every left side pass is a little bit different because of, of the nuances of the floor. People got in the way. Something that you might set the partner I might bring back. And the better dances are more connected. I.e., if you're having a conversation with somebody, if I just talk and you don't say anything back, there's no feedback. But if I talk and then you say something that changes what I'm talking about, and you're asking about philosophy, you give me a little example of what philosophy means to you, and then I take that and I go somewhere with it, that's what happens with the dance. It'll change, it'll morph based on so many things going on. Whereas a lot of the other dances, you're, you're going to A to B to C to D, to E to F, and they don't get that as much of a, and I don't mean to, Put the other dances down, but it's it's it feels less of a conversation as opposed to this because it'll so much changes on the fly. Could be interesting because because it's a dance that's comp fairly influenced by the type of music we listen to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's kind of its roots are in most sort of like any of the swing dances, uh, the, the the swing rhythms. Um, the more we listen to music and dance to music that doesn't necessarily swing, uh, the dance can morph into something maybe not recognizable. Uh, a different type of dance. There's a lot of discussion about modern swing, or I can't remember what various people are calling it now, and traditional swing. Um, but in 20 years, it's swung both ways. I mean, we've had a lot of hustle, salsa, cha-cha, music coming in, but it, it swings back. So I think the future depends on what comes to the music and the type of music we listen to.